Hello and welcome to Kerbal Sysram. Today I'm playing in the... Oh, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. I'm playing in the 1.2 pre-release. This is build 1504 or something like that, I believe. Yeah, fif no, 1540. And uh, this build... They're, they're, I don't know what they did to the launcher or what they were trying to do to the launcher, but they broke the launcher. In any case, the game is of course running fine. It has some bug fixes and whatnot. This right here is called the M15... Falcon, I believe, and if you can hear happy, weird, excited coo noises in the background, that's my mom, because um, our cat is currently hunting a fly, which is really cute and funny, and he keeps meowing because he's frustrated because this fly has been flying around for like an hour, and he hasn't caught it. And uh, this is, uh, if you can't already tell, basically inspired by an F-15, but very small, and it was designed to be just a very fast little plane, very small little plane. This isn't the main reason I'm here, I just happened to want to fly it very briefly just to see if it was performing well, and I figured I would open the video showing you this, but this, like I said, is not the reason I am here at the moment. Shoo, and crash and dead and boom. And I'm sorry if you are a person prone to epileptic seizures. And uh, let's see, what did I put here? Oh yes, uh, I need to change this description actually because there are no turbo jets. There are only panther jets and uh, they are not toggleable with three. Although let me double check that. They should not be toggleable with three. Yes, they are not. But the reason the description looked like that is because it was this, the F-208 Star Array, which um, if you might have noticed by the name, yes, based on the F-104S with a doubled hull section and modified tail. So the tail, the tail plane, instead of having a T shape, has a, I forget what they call it when it's like this, an upside down T? No, <laughs> they, uh, it has this shape and this is kind of, the fact that I did this double hull made me think of doing that M-15 thing, which is why I showed that real quick. But uh, as you can see, this is essentially a starfighter with a, um, with tanks on the wings and uh, the rear hull doubled like that and a modified tail like I already said and uh, the biggest difference between this and my previous F-104 besides the doubled hull is um, the Panther engine and the reason for the Panther engine is due to balance changes in KSP since the uh, last time I made the F-104. I, I forget what version I originally made it in. It was either 1.0 or mm, that was close to hitting 1.5 I believe. It might have been, it might have even been earlier but I'm pretty sure it was 1.0 or 1.5. In any case the Panther engines are stronger than, of course, the Weasley engines, and uh, the Weasley engines were no longer cutting it. Basically, it couldn't get to uh, 400 meters per second, and the turbo jets don't really, these whiplash turbo ram jets don't really work 100% until you get up to 400 meters per second. As you can see right now, we are climbing very fast, and while we are climbing very fast, we are also gaining quite a bit of speed. And so the whole thing I'm planning on doing right now is just uh, very quickly getting us up to speed and up to altitude. As you can see, I brought up the, whatchamacallit, the, uh, can't think of the word right now, the the fuel, the fuel, uh, the, the right-click me menu thingy on one of the fuel tanks on the uh, wings because uh, we're going to drop the drop tanks as soon as we run out of fuel. And as you can see, we're already, uh, already used half the fuel just getting up to this altitude. Uh, very very quickly and as you can see we are now above 400 meters per second climbing rapidly as you can see I just cut off the afterburners on the Panther engines which means uh, they're not going to take as much fuel and I've just cut off the Panther engines entirely because we are now going fast enough for the turbo jets to take over entirely and as you can see our fuel usage has not dropped dramatically but it's dropped a bit and so the difference between this and afterburners is well, I just turned them back on real quick to take a look. It is significant. So yeah, having those off, very good for our fuel use. I actually dipped the nose a bit too much. We're actually falling slightly now, but uh, that's okay. As we continue, we'll of course uh, pull back over to the horizon a little bit. This thing can go up to a maximum altitude. Well, without doing a zoom climb, it can go up to an altitude of, uh, I'd say, 18 kilometers, 18.5 uh, maybe 19 kilometers, I'm not sure. At that point, you start to have to sacrifice far too much speed in order to maintain a high enough angle of attack to maintain that altitude. 
and um, obviously that doesn't work as well as flying at a higher speed at a slightly lower altitude. Right now I'm below what I think the recommended altitude would be. I believe the recommended altitude for this design would be around uh, 16 to 17 kilometers. I haven't done terribly much testing and also these numbers are based on just as much on this design as they are based on the F-104 itself because they are fairly similar. And as you can see our fuel usage is dropping even more as we get higher, although in less than a well not less than a second but well now less than a second and we're out of fuel on those and as you can see they bump into each other immediately yeah it's pretty interesting the little effects on that like the the, the just the aerodynamic effects that cause that to happen and let me get rid of that because we don't need that anymore and that'll disappear I forget how long that'll take to disappear let's take a let's let's watch it nine kilometers ten kilometers eleven twelve 13, 14, and we are actually starting to climb just a bit. I'm going to drop the nose, 16 kilometers, 17, 18. It should get to like 22 kilometers, I believe, before it'll disappear. And 22, 23, 24, 25. All right, at 25 kilometers is when it vanished, and you can see we're getting some heating effects now because we are going quite fast at quite a high altitude. And see, I believe this is around our, uh, our service altitude, like what we should try to maintain because as you can see our altitude is pretty close to that ceiling I talked about our surface speed is uh, only gaining very slowly and our angle of attack is pretty high which isn't good so surface altitude probably should be around 17 kilometers but uh, I'm not 100% sure with that obviously there's there's a bit of tweaking to be done there but uh, yeah this is a thing and uh, let's just go ahead and roll it over and pull up as hard as we can because what's the worst that could happen pulling up as hard as we can while activating these things at this altitude doing this yeah this can't possibly go wrong of course we can squeeze a little more performance out of it if we wanted to by engaging the turbo jets the uh, Panthers in uh, after burning mode uh, so you can get a little bit extra performance out of it by doing that obviously I did that while I'm doing this extremely high G bank turn look at this the, the G's we're just continually pulling more and more G's and uh, we didn't actually lose all that much speed doing that maneuver in fact ooh, we almost stayed above 400 meters per second doing that maneuver almost didn't quite but came very close to staying above 400 meters per second and uh, I'm curious now what 11.8 G's we got up to just then so uh, and that was a sustained high G turn a lot of times in Kerbal Space Program when you pull really high G's in a plane you are not doing a sustained turn it's just a very quick momentary high G turn and so yeah that's that's pretty cool and uh, I was gonna go land on this island but that's gonna take too long because I want to move on to show you the other part which is the F 104 S Starfighter LR stands for long range because it has these tanks on the end and like I said it has the Panther and the turbojet back there and so this is essentially what that was based on here we have an F 104 S Starfighter and of course I also have the version without the drop tanks on the wings but to take a quick look at the past here's a version that still has the Weasley engine and some Starfighters or at least I believe it was Starfighters um, I might be confusing it with another design, had a rocket motor attached to them to experiment with uh, boosting up to even higher speeds. And uh, so I put my own little booster rocket on here. Uh, obviously, the only solid rocket booster we have is uh, a, um, whatchamacallit, a Sepatron, which isn't really enough of a booster for my purposes here, so I use this, although this also is not enough of a booster because the monoprop engine has very little thrust. So this mostly demonstrates an effect, and it's not practical at all. Um, in fact, this I will delete after I'm done showing it real quick because there's no point in keeping it around. I'll just use it to show you that and to show you the Weasley engine does not have enough performance. Also, I just noticed they changed the categories here. They broke up utility into a bunch of different categories. So we have coupling, which has docking ports, the advanced grabbing units, the decouplers, separator, uh, yeah, separators, etc., etc. We have payload parts, which is our fairings and service bays and cargo bays. We have the aerodynamics, of course. As always, we have all the landing and wheel stuff in one category. We have thermal protection in its own category. We have electrical systems in its own category. Communications has been moved out of science. 
not strictly necessary, but I do like it. It, it does, it does offer a better breakdown in my opinion. Of course, we have the science equipment always in that spot and utility just contains some converter things, some drills, some uh, lights, ladders, escape system, uh, crew cabins, which um, honestly, these crew cabins could kind of go into their own category. Maybe, maybe this instead of being pods. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe this could be split into two things, control pods and crew pods or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah. Oh, and this little ladder and parachutes. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And whoa, and they've also, of course, changed the uh, text somewhat. But like I said, I'm just going to use this to kind of show how the Weasley engines are not effective enough for getting up to speed anymore, or the Weasley engine, not engines, it's just one on here. And also having that pod down there makes it so you have to be a lot more careful with your takeoff and uh, go a bit farther. Of course, because we have the two engines on here that are very powerful, we can go sh pretty much straight up. In fact, we can just go straight up, but that's a bit slower than going out. Not much slower, but uh, yeah, it is It is a starfighter after all. Oh, look at that. You can see the uh, the front end of... You can barely see the leading edge of the wing, and you can see the uh, fuel pod there. And you can see uh, we're going through our fuel pretty quickly on those uh, drop tanks. Not as quickly, but uh, still pretty quickly. And uh, what I'm going to do is... Oh, we're dropping speed quite badly here. And it's because we're uh, going... Uh, it's, it's because the Weasley engine doesn't have that big of an operating range, that good of an operating range. And you can see immediately, just with that, how this is not as good as having the Panther on board. I'm just going to go ahead and activate the little monoprop engine, which won't give us much of a boost, but looks pretty. It does look very pretty with that new texture and everything. I have the uh, gimbal range either off or, yeah, extremely small. And you can see it just has a nice look to it. I like that. And I'm um, going to drop these. As you can see, at this lower speed, they still collide with each other. Pretty interesting little thing that happens. Uh, I, I've only managed to have it happen once, but I had it happen once where they collided and, like, exploded. Well, a piece of one of them exploded when they collided because they collided so violently. I don't know the exact parameters of dropping them at that time that did that, but yeah. And just to give a good performance comparison, here is the F-104S Starfighter with the new Panther engine. And obviously we're going to be able to get off the ground a lot easier at a slower speed because we are... What's the word I'm looking for? We are not carrying that little uh, booster engine on the bottom that prevents us from pulling up as hard. And you'll also see that we're at a higher speed and I'm pulling up to pretty much vertical, and you can see I'm still accelerating while pulling straight up, or nearly straight up, whereas the other version, of course, could not continue to accelerate while pulling up. Of course, we do burn through fuel quite a bit quicker, as I mentioned previously. And... Yeah. There you go. The F-104S Starfighter, the F-208, which I called the Star Ray because I figured that would be more appropriate since it's not really a fighter. It still could be a fighter, but it's not nearly uh, as agile as this. So I figured, you know, it's still a fighter per se, but it doesn't deserve the name Starfighter or any other kind of name that involves the word fighter because it's not so much a fighter as it is maybe a reconnaissance plane or something or, you know, it's just an alternate version of the Starfighter. It's its own thing, and it's just a bit different. But uh, yeah, as I said, you can see that the uh, performance on this is a bit better. We're, of course, losing speed because we are we are going so high up so fast that uh, this thing did not... We did not bank as early as we should have, perhaps, but uh, whatever. As you can see, this is the performance of it. It's pretty good. can roll it over. And uh, we can accelerate pretty darn quickly, of course, because I rolled this over very, very quickly without us getting proper speed up before going level. We're going to fall out of the sky to a certain extent because we're not going fast enough to maintain enough lift at this altitude. In fact, by pulling up, I'm uh, increasing drag quite a bit. Not as much as I thought I would be, but uh, yeah, this thing can 
quite easily get up to speed. It does uh, take a similar amount of fuel to the uh, F208 I was showing you. Yeah, you can see we got quite a bit of drag because I'm pulling it up. Let's see if I just let the nose fall a little bit. Actually, we can uh, we can accelerate to above 400 meters per second while in this dive, and then pull up very gently. Pull up very very gently. Obviously, it's uh, you want to maintain the speed while pulling up. And uh, we're at a low enough altitude where I'm going to have to keep the Panthers on, even though we're going above the speed where we don't need them, per se, because we're just low enough in the atmosphere that there's a lot of drag going on. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the afterburners. You can see we're dropping speed because we're not having the afterburner on. And if we give it a moment... We should start to accelerate, although actually our altitude is low enough uh, we might not start accelerating. I might actually even need to turn the uh, afterburner back on to keep us from dropping below 400 meters a second. That said, we did, just before I started trying to maneuver a little bit there, we did briefly start gaining speed, I believe. Not 100% sure. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on get us up a bit further. I notice with the uh, with this version it's uh, it's it's generally easier to let it get up to 500 meters per second before disengaging the panther and uh, maybe that's something that will be a consistent better idea. Yeah, see we're still accelerating now that I've let it get to 500. Now the thing is I've only turned off the afterburner I haven't turned off the engine and when I turn off the engine you'll see we start losing some speed immediately. Let's see, can we keep it above 500? Mm, not quite. It's gonna drop just a little bit. Of course we are gaining altitude and it's slowing down and now it's gonna start going back up. There we go. But yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in space.